here in there. Right? Turn that down a little bit. Sorry, guys. Still uh, just trying to get things set up. So. Please excuse me while I'm still trying to get a few things set up. How you doing, Miss uh, Bama Grits? Haven't seen you in forever. I 
have to do this the old-fashioned way without a fryer, because my fryer is being stupid. So... So how are you doing? That's good, that's good. Um, I thought I was going to be able to use my fryer, but uh, just because I can't use my fryer doesn't mean I can't make donuts. A fat man will find a way to make donuts. Turn my turn my comments on on my phone. Give me just a second. <laughs> I sure hope so. Okay. No, it's not really that big. Um, it's kind of an illusion. I mean, I can literally put my hand on this counter and touch the edge of the stove at the same time if I lean over. So it's not really massive. So how have you been? Like I said, I haven't seen you in forever. Uh, I heard you've been sick. So I have to ditch the oil that way, or do it the old fashioned way. Oh, okay, okay. How are you taking that? Are you still, are you doing okay now?
Yeah, I can imagine. Um, you know, Ashley and I are here for you. If you ever need anything, we'll do the best we can. If you ever want somebody to talk to, just message me. Okay, so I'm just kind of waiting for to see how many people end up coming in. I, uh, decided to kind of do, focus a lot of my live streams more on cooking now, because people seem to really like that. I've gotten some pretty good response on my cooking streams, so I figured I'd do quite a few more of them. together and it's a lot of it has to do with food now you just got to kind of find your own way so hello hello elegant how are you doing thank you for stopping in um, just kind of waiting to see how many people come in and uh, Gonna go from there. I've been told that I have a lot of patience with my cooking and Patience when you're cooking is something you have to have, especially if you're baking or doing, uh, wanting things to taste good and turn out right. So I'm going to be a little bit more patient, see if anybody else wants to come in in the next few minutes and then I'll get started. What is your other account, Bama? Uh, Sharon, Sharon Burke. Oh, that is you, isn't it? Sharon Burke. Okay, okay. That was you this morning. I was wondering. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad I know that now. <laughs> so I'm going to just get a few things ready because some things have to be at room temperature when they get mixed. Now, this recipe takes a little bit, so I 
Uh, we are in Missouri, right just south of St. Louis. So, and everybody, this is Ashley, if you guys haven't seen her before. So, with these streams, what I'm wanting to do is I want to show people how to make certain things from literally start to finish. And today I want to make some donuts. Uh, these are going to be the old fashioned cake style donuts. They're not going to be the yeast donuts that everybody is so accustomed to. Uh, these are going to be more cakey. They're going to have a kind of a crispy outside and they're going to be really soft and uh, fluffy on the inside. That's the one thing I have to have while I cook is my coffee. Or bake anyway. It keeps me focused. <laughs> so... So I'm going to get out my ingredients first. Yeah, a cake donut, an old fashioned cake donut. Baking powder. Flour. Pretty sure we've got three cups. There's another recipe. Now all of these recipes that I'm doing in these strings, I am getting recipes online. These are recipes that anybody can generally look up. Because most likely um, Anything anybody wants to see is something that they've looked up or uh, have a general idea of, but don't know how it's going to turn out, what it's going to taste like, what it's going to look like, how it should look uh, and feel at different stages. And that's kind of what I did with my bread the other day. Um, it was a start, literally start to finish thing. So... Go this one I wanted. No, that's not normal. Oh, there we go. Now, um, this recipe is. from the Betty Crocker website, and I'm not endorsing them any, uh, anything that I make or bake or anything like that. 
Okay. Take your phone call. I'm, I'm going to go slow on this. So, um, I'm not, whenever I make these things, I'm just doing a general search. I'm not endorsing any sites or anything like that. I want to do recipes off of all kinds of different sites. But I just tell you um, the site. Um, that way you know where to go if you want to find the recipe. Okay. So, got my flour. I got my flour in this jar. It's pretty cool. I like it. Okay. Let me try to hang it down a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, got my baking powder, flour, I've got butter, well it's margarine, I, a lot of people are really picky with when they get butter or margarine, margarine I like to use for baking because it does have vegetable oil in it and it makes things to me a little bit more uh, fluffy. Uh, some things actually require butter and for those things I do get that uh, need some sugar it's granulated sugar Now while I'm getting these things together, because my fryer decided to not work on me today, I have over on the stove a pot that's about a third to a half full of uh, cooking oil. Uh, some people use canola oil, some people use peanut oil, I'm just using vegetable oil. Uh, just makes it easy. So. Two eggs. Two eggs. Okay. Okay, so I'll wait till you're back, sir. Sure. Oh, and I also need my uh, cinnamon. I think I have enough. Half a teaspoon. Now, if this isn't enough, uh, cinnamon, I'm going to supplement it with pumpkin pie spice. Um, pumpkin pie spice is just a mixture of uh, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves. Uh, it's what people put into like pumpkin pie and stuff to really give it a good flavor. Uh, during this season of year, I use it more than not, and I kind of didn't realize when I went shopping last that I would be doing videos like this that would require individual like cinnamon and nutmeg and I made a pumpkin roll and I needed the pumpkin pie spice or I could have gotten the individual ingredient you know individual spices and I just went with the simpler one and now I'm kind of running low so Well, thank you, TJ. I really appreciate that. Appreciate any time you can come in. Good luck at your doctor's appointment today. Um, 
just doing a really simple um, beginning to end on how to make some cake donuts. So uh, it's not really that hard. I've got, uh, I'm going to actually get a little bit more milk. So, and good luck at your doctor's appointment today, TJ. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine ingredients to make donuts. It's pretty simple. Uh, a lot of it is sitting in the fridge and uh, letting the dough relax and cool. Uh, so I guess I'll get started. So I've got my bowl. I do that's a little easier. And to my bowl, I'm going to add a cup and a half of flour. I'm going to end up using a lot more, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to end up using about three and a half cups or so. Mm -hmm. Oh. About a cup and a half right there. Now, uh, like I said, um, this is the first time I've actually done this recipe, so if something, some mishap happens and they turn out totally wrong, I apologize, but this is just this uh, particular recipe. Um, I do read a lot of the comments and reviews about recipes before I do them, and I see the different adjustments different people make. Now, this recipe, like I said, it's on the BettyCrocker.com website. It is called Cake Donuts. It's pretty simple. Um, it's got a picture of a uh, you know, donut with some rainbow frosting on top. So if you Google Cake Donut Recipe, come across the BettyCrocker.com website, this is the one you'll find. Um, I need... Three teaspoons of baking powder. Got my one teaspoon here. I need a cup of sugar, granulated sugar.
Um, let's see. I need a half a teaspoon of salt. How are you doing, Food Forest? I'm just sitting here uh, making some homemade cake donuts. She's here, but she may be on a phone call still. Now, like I said, I, I need a total of a half a teaspoon of the cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So, all in all, three quarters of a teaspoon. Now, I may have, no, I don't have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to supplement it with uh, pumpkin pie spice, which maybe I do. Yep, it's almost exactly half a teaspoon right there. Wow. Now, um, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, but I'm gonna, since it's, like I said, the holidays, I'm gonna change that over to pumpkin pie spice. Now you can supplement it. If you don't like nutmeg, you don't have to add it. I like to add just a little bit of extra flavor. Okay, so that's my spices. Now, now it says to add these things together, you know, all and uh, just start blending it. Now I've got the milk and the eggs. Uh, in the reviews that I was reading, um, it says to decrease the amount of milk because this ends up turning out really, really sticky. Um, this ends up turning out really, really sticky. So everybody was saying to uh, reduce the amount of milk, which is what I'm doing. It normally calls for three quarters of a cup. I'm just going to add two thirds of a cup, which is what everybody was saying worked. Now, things like this, where I hate these websites where they just say uh, in large bowl, beat one and a half cups of the flour and the remaining ingredients. Well, you got dry ingredients, you got wet ingredients, everything's going to end up being a mess. And not everything's going to blend right. So I always like to put my dry ingredients in first. Well, thank you. I don't know why everybody thinks this kitchen is so big. and um, I mean, it is a nice size kitchen, but uh, I, it could be bigger. I could have more cabinets. take this dishwasher out put cabinets in. It's not something I've thought of doing. But I think Ashley would kind of kill me. <laughs> right, hon? I try to make things, uh, you know, simple to find Okay, so now I'm going to take two-thirds, about two-thirds of a cup of milk. And two eggs. That's my liquid ingredients. So I want to kind of do how I do pasta. Make a well in the center. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this kitchen is actually like three times bigger than the last kitchen we had. We lived in a little apartment in the city. And, uh, I mean, you walked here and then you turned around and there was the other counter and then you walked this way and this was the, I mean, it was, it was that small. Um, I also have, uh, in this recipe, I need uh, two tablespoons of shortening, but I don't use shortening. I always substitute shortening with my margarine or butter. Uh, when it calls for lard, that's a difference. I always use the lard, but um, I don't, I always use butter for shortening. You can interchange that easily. Push my margarine up a little bit. Okay. I put my milk in. And now here comes the fun part. I'm doing this is I'm heating uh, my oil. I got about three or four inches of oil in a pot and I'm heating that up slowly. And the reason I'm doing that, I, did, I didn't just turn the burner on and let it heat up, is because you want to get it up to a certain temperature and you want that temperature to be consistent throughout the whole uh, pot. You don't want it to be, you know, too hot. You want to get it about 375. Sitting at 375, it is able to cook the donut but not burn it, but not cold enough so the oil soaks in or soaks into the donut. I use my mixer just on a low setting. Get this mixed in. No, I'm not doing this by hand. I did my bread by hand. scrape my bowl as I'm mixing. So I got my spatula. This is extremely wet. Wow. I wasn't expecting it this way. Like I said, I always read the reviews. See what different people say. Everybody said reduce the milk, so I did. I can't imagine how uh, watery this would have been if I only if I added the full amount of milk. Now this is a roll cake batter, so it's going to be more of a cake dough. A lot of cake donuts are made, and uh, you guys can hear me over this, I'm sure you can, but a lot of cake donuts are made with literally cake batter. That's why they're called cake donuts. Um, 
and you put them into this mold or this uh, little machine and you push down the button kind of like a pancake dispenser but uh, it makes the donut shape for you and then you know you plop it into the fryer from the thing I don't have one of those so I'm making a, a dough cake donut Okay, so this here is nowhere close to a dough. It calls for three and a half cups. So after you beat it, you add in some more dough, or more, more uh, flour, but you have to stir this in. So does anybody have any big plans for today? Yeah, I think they did too. There we go. Hi, Marie. I won't dock you. Now I'm uh, using literally the last of my flour. So before I do anything else, I'm going to have to end up going shopping and getting more flour. So, this is a lot of dough. Put some of this off to the side. Now, if I wanted to, this would be the perfect time. Um, if I wanted to make the dough ahead of time, to go ahead because it's still moist it's going to retain that moisture it's going to retain that tackiness and I would be able to put this roll this up get it covered up and put it in the freezer to make it another time so because I don't want to make all of it right now I'm not It's literally the last of my flour, so I have to make do. Didn't realize I was that low.
I'm only going to end up doing a few, just so we can see what it's like. I made a full batch, but... I knew this dough was going to be really, really tacky. And I knew I was going to end up needing a lot of flour. But, oh well. There we go. It's turning out better now. See if I had any more flour anywhere. Do what? Yeah. Okay, so I ended up running into a hiccup here. <laughs> and uh This recipe is way, way off, even with reducing the milk. I had three and a half cups of flour, because I measured it out, and that's what this calls for. And it calls to, on a very floured surface, which, yeah, I can understand. It was, it was pretty floured, though. Um, I took off half the dough. And even with half the dough taken out, the flour that I had, and this is where the mistakes come in, part of the video. Um, I didn't make, you know, I, I didn't make a mistake, but I am going to have to see if I can, because I literally ran out of flour. I had three and a half cups, a little bit more was, you know, but I took out half the dough. So this is asking, this is really going to end up taking like five cups of flour. So I'm going to run to my neighbor's house real quick to see if I can borrow some flour. And uh, I shall be right back. Yeah, uh, Marie, I literally took out half of the dough before I added in the extra flour. And it's still, I mean, still is going to take quite a bit more.
So, if you guys can give me a few minutes. Oh, if you guys can give me a few minutes, I'll be back.
You have a good day, Food Forest. Okay. Don't get the comments. There it goes. Okay, now that I got more flour, I can go on with this. Get this pushed into this flour. Okay, now that's a lot better. This is a, a dough that can be worked with. It's soft. It's very pliable. I like the idea of that. Now I can add in a little bit more batter. It doesn't look like you want to let this sit for really any time. Yeah, she was like, uh, why don't you just make them out of biscuits? Well, I don't want biscuit donuts. I wanted something, you know, I wanted to show people how to make, you know, actual homemade donuts. Can't you make them out of pancakes too? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. No, that's more of a uh, funnel cake, yeah. Funnel cake. Okay. Yeah, this is a good dough. I like this dough. So I think I will add in the rest of this now that I know I have more than enough flour. You want to get the tackiness away. Now this uh, recipe does not say to chill the dough, which I think is a tad unusual, but I'm doing the recipe as it is. It says to roll out to about a 3 8 inch thickness. A lot of people said you can just pat it down, which is fine.
I don't want that any kind of tackiness to the dough because it will stick to the counter. But I don't want to add too much flour because then the the dough will be uh, really floury and thick and not how it should be. So I want to add just enough so it's not tacky. Every so often, what I like to do is roll the dough with my hands on the counter and see if it's sticking. If it's sticking, I want to add a little more flour to the counter in that spot. I like this dough because you can pat it out and it doesn't seem to be retaining any prints or anything so it'll it looks like it'll make a good heavy donut Understand some people have donut cutters. I got seven people in here. Wow. Um, nobody's saying anything. Come on, guys, you can talk. Or are you intently taking notes? I can understand that too. So, a lot of people don't have donut cutters. I understand that. I don't. So, Check my oil, make sure that it's hot enough. So, what I'm going to use is the lid of a mason jar. You want it to be about two and a half inches, two and a half to three, which this is right at three inches, which works perfect. Now, at this step, you don't want your hands wet at all. If your hands are wet, the dough is going to stick to them. If your cutter is wet, <laughs> well, I've got to taste them first to see how they taste. Make sure they're uh, okay for everybody. So, Here's my mason jar lid. I'll put my butter back. Now 
Now I need something smaller than this to make my donut hole. You can experiment with different ideas, different things you might have around the house, or in the kitchen, I should say. Sorry about that screeching. How are you doing, Ozarks? Okay, so, like I said, I don't have a donut cutter. Uh, so I have to use things I have around the house. And I thought it would be pretty cool to use this. Um, I have some little mason jar salt and pepper shakers. And this will work. The donut hole is going to be a little big. But as you can see, the ring of the donut is going to fit right like that. So. I want to keep my cutters flowered so make a little pile of flour right there next to my dough spread it out just a little bit I take my cutter roll it around in the flour best can there we go Try and get this so you guys can see it pretty easily. Okay. And I take. Now I want to push straight down. I don't want to turn it at all because that will pinch the dough closed. And it'll have some crazy thing on the sides. It won't. It won't look right. Okay. Punch down and straight up. When it starts to stick, more flour. Now these are only between a quarter and three eighths of an inch thick.
Okay. Now I take my little hole cutter. I think that's going to end up being too big. You know what, I'm going to use it anyway. Now you want to make sure you get it in the center. Push down. There's that donut hole right there. Toss that off to the side. Now, I have one cut. It looks kind of funky, but this isn't, you know, rocket science. This is just some homemade donuts. I'm not trying to win prizes for this. I take a skewer, a little kebab skewer. I have my oil set. I'm going to take one donut, and drop it in. I'm taking a cloth because I don't have much paper to really be able to use. And I'll show you with the next ones. I'm just testing this one. I'll take my skewer to be able to flip the donut because it's easier to be able to get it in there. If they, <laughs> I'll show you an example if they don't have a hole. I will make one without a hole to show you. Donut, no hole. Oh, this is more of a, just a test. I know you guys can't see me very good right here, but uh, I'll bring this over here in just a minute just to see the temperature and everything of my pot.
looks more like an onion ring because the center is so large. But there's a donut. John, you asked why it needs a hole? Because if a donut doesn't have a hole, it's going to puff up. That's more like a cake. It's puffy rather than being light. How's that? Center like that? Mm, that's really good. Instead, it's more of a bread and cake on the inside. Ashley, your opinion? I think I'll do it like that. That was really good. Even the thin ones like that. It's a cake donut for you though. That is moist though. For a cake donut. That's very moist. Yeah. Yeah, now that I can pick it up. You see, and you can't really control how that gets cooked. It's so thick. I mean, I'm sure it tastes good. But it's proportions of the, the outside to inside. The crispy, the crispiness of the outside, and uh, compared to the 
you know, in the center is you even roll into a ball because it gets more of a. They do. They cook very even and very quick. You want to make sure that you have your temperature upright and the donut holes. You don't want to just pop in. Um, you put them in, and I'll show you here in just a second. Just figured I'd toss some powdered sugar on top. But you have to wait till they cool to do all that. I mean, these taste a lot better than I thought they would for a, uh, a dough type donut. ones you buy in the store are, I mean, if you buy cake donuts. They're nasty. I like cake donuts. I don't like the ones at the store. They have too much of a uh, aftertaste to them. It sticks to the top of your mouth. Yeah. I like the donut sticks up on my dough. I can't have them. I maybe even cook this one too long. But this is a donut hole. Actually, it looks good because it's, you know, looks just like a donut hole should. Let that cool for a minute. While I do that, actually bring you guys over here to show you if I can get the camera out of my little there we go don't mind my uh, messiness Please. Uh. There it goes. Okay. And it leaves like no residue in the pot. That's still just as clear as it was when I put them in. Yes, Bama, just in time. Um, I've got my pot of oil. I've already made one just to try it and it turned out amazing now the outside of the uh, the ring to this uh, if it sticks it's going to stretch out that's why you want it thicker but all I do is I take my skewer put it inside the ring plop it into the oil uh, while it's in the oil, you can maneuver it just a little bit to round it out more. And it will float up to the top. So put it on, put it in, swirl it around. Okay, now I take this, I flip it over. That may end up being too hot. Flip that donut over. I mean, they're not as uh, round and perfect as you see in the store, but that's why these are homemade. That one drain a little bit. Now I turned my oil back down because it looked like it was getting too hot. 
I don't want it to get too hot because I want the outside crispy, but I want the inside still um, nice and soft. And these here are the donut holes. Roll them into a ball. Okay. And then these, you take your spoon, slotted spoon, put them in, and well, I'll show you guys this. The way you can see. Put it in. Now it's going to sit there and bubble for a minute, or I mean just for a few seconds. And then, here in a second, it'll pop up. Here it comes. There you go. As soon as it pops up, spin it around a little bit. And it should be done. Put them in the center of a donut. Let it cool. Now these aren't like the regular glazed donuts that you get at the store. These are darker, they are uh, thicker, they're more cakey. Um, but when you smell it, when you cook it, talking about the smell of vision thing, uh, you get the smell of the cinnamon and nutmeg and the little spices that you put in there. And it smells really good. It smells like cinnamon pumpkin. <laughs> that is actually a really good description. Oh, hi, Sherry. How are you? Homemade cake donuts, guys. Uh, kind of funky looking. Not as thick as the ring should be, but... Like I said, I had to compromise on a few things. And that's what you do when you home cook. 
you don't have everything perfect. Not everything is going to turn out just like it does in, you know, advertisements and pictures and stuff like that that you see online. And that's what I love about cooking because... Because these are not the typical donuts. These, to me, taste a lot better. Oh, you're on the TV at work? I don't even know what you do for a living, Sherry. Anybody else watching me, Sherry, along with you on that TV? Now, I know you guys can hear me, you can't see me, but you can hear me. Um, now you can take this dough, which is what I'm going to do with the rest of it, and I'm going to freeze it. Um, I'm going to make my donut holes from the donuts that I've made. But I don't need any more right now than what I've made already. So I'm going to make the donut holes. I'm going to end up putting some powdered sugar on top of them. And uh, I'm going to bunch the rest of the dough up. And I'm going to freeze it. You can freeze really any kind of dough. Um, there are some doughs that you can't. And I wouldn't recommend it. But this kind of dough you can. It's easy to do. You just put it in a baggie. Put it in the freezer. Um, I would actually recommend uh, putting it in a baggie. Then in the fridge for a couple hours to chill it. And then put it in the freezer. That way it doesn't... Uh, You uh, you asked that question. Oh, these are already done. See, already plopped up. Oh, except for two of them. One. And uh, I actually did a live stream. Uh, a couple days ago, with making homemade bread. And give me just a minute so I can pull these out. And I will show you what is left of that bread. We don't eat much bread in this house. Um, because of Ashley's surgery and the carbs in bread. But I'll show you. This ended up being a double loaf of bread. And what I mean by that is my bread, uh, my bread pan was in use because, well, if you watch the whole two hours worth of video, um, not four hours worth of video, yeah, you'll understand that I made dinner. Um, but hold on, Bama. Uh, if you take this recipe that I did for bread, This is all that's left of that loaf. Okay. If you take the recipe that I did for this, which is in the description of that video that I made, and before you let it rise the second time, you get... Sorry, I had to get into my pants, guys. 
get one of these and when before you put it into your loaf pan you uh you put it roll it into balls divide you know you, you cut it because you'll have to cut that into two the way i did mine i left mine all together but you can form that into rolls and then make some really good rolls this bread is amazing and uh if they, it was smaller all you have to do i mean before you um divide it up into your two loaf pans or before your second rise <coughs> before your second rise you roll it into balls you put it in here and you bake it in this Uh, it depends on how small you make the holes, or the, the balls. Um, I've known people to just make one ball and put it in, and it rises, and it's just a big yeast ball. Um, others, um, if you make it small enough, you can, you know, if you make the ball small enough, you can put three in each. Depends on how you want your roll to look. Oh, yeah, you have to let me know how that turns out. See, these are my homemade donuts. But yeah, um, the homemade, the yeast rolls are the same thing. I mean, it's the same recipe as bread. It just all depends on how you portion it and how you, what you bake it in. So... Like I said, you just toss it, you know, roll it up into balls. After you punch it down, you uh, you divide it, and you divide it. If my pan is a 36 uh, muffin tin, sorry, a 12 muffin tin. Um, if I wanted three, you know, if I wanted the big, you know, bubbly top on the rolls, um, I would divide it into three for each thing so it would be a total of 36 little balls I would break that up into um, now you have to realize that uh, the way you measure it you know make sure that it's it's the right size for the the hole is that you, that's going to rise up while it's baking at least twice as big as it when you put it in there so you're going to have that top you put the three balls in make it about level with the top of the muffin tin maybe just a little below and it'll rise up you know that much above the tin oh yeah that would work perfect And uh, what a lot of people don't realize is white, uh, a simple white bread recipe can be made into so many things. It can be made into the rolls. It can be made into cinnamon rolls. You just roll it out, add your cinnamon and sugar and butter mixture, and, um, and then put raisins. And then, you know, if you want walnuts or something in it, then roll it up, you know, into a big log, slice it, and then bake it. It's the same recipe, other, you know, you're just adding extra stuff to it. So I'm taking the rest of my dough. So for, you know, if my son gets home and I want to make donuts for him, I'm putting it in a freezer bag. Now what I want to do, and I do this with you know when I freeze meats or whatever any kind of dough I want to flatten out inside that bag because I don't want to leave this dough out to try to warm up and thaw forever because then um, it won't be it'll dry out so I 
I spread it out inside the bag as thin as I can get it. That way, when I pull this out of the freezer, 15 minutes later, it's thawed. I'm rolling it out, cutting it, and frying it up. It's a good trick, uh, a good hint for anybody, for anything that you want to freeze, really, that you can maneuver, that you can thin out in a bag. Sauces, gravies. Doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. Just want it kind of even in there, that way it all thaws out at the same rate. put it in the fridge I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill and then I put it in the freezer for you can put it up in the, in the freezer for up to like two three weeks so the uh, making bread to start to finish um, I will, uh, Marie, what I'll do, just for you, sweetheart, is I will, uh, actually, that's, that's a really long live stream, um, I will get that condensed down, uh, send me your email, and I will send you the ingredients and uh, explain very easily how to do it. Do what? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Bama, I'm sorry. I'm busy trying to clean up a little bit. My email, Sharon, is uh, in the description of this video. I met Sharon. I didn't mean... I'm going to... Okay, that's easy to remember. Um, but if you want to send me an email real quick, said my email address is in the description of this video and I will uh, get that more easily condensed for you on how to make those rolls. And um, I'm just cleaning up, sorry about the scraping sound. I'm cleaning up the dough mess and I use the back of a butter knife. Where the dough stuck to the counter. And that's for any pasta or anything that sticks to the counter. You can use the back of a butter knife and it won't scratch the counter. Or if you're, you know, particular, you can just uh, wet a washcloth and let it sit on the counter for a little bit to loosen that up.
making donuts, making any kind of baked anything can be pretty messy. So, I always like to clean up my mess, that way I don't have to clean it later. Okay. But yeah, if there's anything um, you guys want to learn how to make that you haven't made before, that you may be um, we leery about making um just leave it in the comments or send me an email um send me an email and tell me what you want uh I mean, I may not be able to do everything, like, you know, some kind of liver and onions or something crazy. You know, I'm not a professional chef, but I'll do the best I can. I'll show you from start to finish uh, how it should start out, how you should cook it, how it would end up tasting and looking. So, I've got the rest of my mess to clean up, and I've got some donuts to eat. And I know Ashley is hating me because they're donuts, and she can't eat much of them. So, yeah. Thanks for joining my live stream, guys. Uh, like I said, my email address is in the description. Uh, I've got a couple people in here on my uh, count. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up for me. That way I can get credit for this little stream. And if you can, uh, if you want something specific or just if you want to see more of these kind of videos my uh, PayPal address is in the description as well if you want to uh, leave a kind little donation it's not necessary you don't have to uh, but if you guys want to see videos like this more often uh, where you see things from the beginning to the end of how something's made any mistakes mess ups things like that It'll help out on uh, the food bill and uh, being able to get those ingredients to continue cooking for you guys. Again, love you guys. You're my YouTube family. And uh, y'all have a good day. Bye.